are watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Workers across 68 UK universities go on strike. Indian state police accused of carrying out instant justice. Vanuatu workers face exploitation in Australia. And finally, UN warns wildfires to rise by 30% by 2050. First, we go to the UK, where over 50,000 higher education workers continued strikes this week. Organised by the University and College Union, the action impacted 68 universities across the country. The protest began with a five-day strike in 44 institutions last week. Higher education workers have been fighting for better pay, benefits and working conditions. They are also protesting a 35% cut to their guaranteed retirement income. The conflict is surrounding the university superannuation scheme, which provides pensions for older universities, research institutes and think tanks. The strike action is also focused on pay inequality and casualization. According to the UCU, over 70,000 academics are working on insecure contracts. Meanwhile, there is a gender pay gap of 16% and a gap of 17% between black and white staff. The gap for people with disabilities is 9%. The union has also stated that staff pay has fallen by over 25% in real terms since 2009. It is demanding a pay increase of £2,500 for all staff and measures to address unimaginable workloads and unequal pay. Workers are also demanding the elimination of zero hour and other such contracts. The Universities and Colleges Employers Association has so far only offered a 1.5% hike on existing salaries for 2021 to 22. The union has spread the strike action over three weeks for a total of 10 days, including a three-day walkout next week. Next, we look at a report by The Guardian on police killings and impunity in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. It looks at six cases of deaths in custody and police shootings of suspects from 2018. The victims were all either Muslim or people belonging, belonging to the Dalit communities historically oppressed under the caste system. The report says that those accused of carrying out and covering up the killings are the police under the BJP government of Hindu extremist Yogi Adityanath. Police have allegedly started carrying out instant justice, maiming or executing people they deem to be criminals. They have also been professionally rewarded for doing so. Official reports are often not lodged, charges are um, watered down and evidence disappears. The National Human Rights Commission recorded over 11,000 cases of police abuses between 2020 and 21. The highest number was reported from Uttar Pradesh. A 2019 report by the National Campaign Against Torture also found that UP had the highest number of custodial deaths. The Guardian report says that the victims' families in several cases were pressurised and threatened by police to stay silent. In two cases, police did not provide families the details of the post-mortem exam which is required by law. When victims' bodies were returned to the families, they bore extensive signs of torture. Government figures show over 8,700 police shootings in UP in the last five years. Not a single officer who shot and killed someone during this time faced any disciplinary action. In our next story, Vanuatu has launched an inquiry into exploitation and abuse in labour mobility programmes. This includes the Australian government's Seasonal Worker Programme, or SWP, in rural and regional areas. The inquiry follows a parliamentary hearing on job insecurity held in January. Workers testified that they had been subjected to bullying and exploitative conditions. They were also made to live in squalid accommodation and did not have access to support services. According to official data from 2019 and 20, there are 4,500 Vanuatu workers in Australia. Workers told Parliament that they were paid only $100 for working 64 hours a week. Another $30 were deducted from this amount without explanation. Workers were initially also told that they would be paid a set hourly rate. However, once they arrived in Australia, they found that they would be paid per tray of fruit picked. Reports show that the number of seasonal workers who left their employers increased from 225 to over 1180 in the past year. The surge has been attributed to widespread exploitation and wage theft. Experts argue that this is despite the fact that SWP is one of the most closely regulated labour programmes in Australia. Aside from people working under government schemes, there are an estimated 60 to 100,000 undocumented farm workers in Australia. And for our final story, the UN has warned that wildfires could increase by 30% by the end of 2050. Extreme fires, which are more frequent, intense and found in atypical areas like the Arctic, are becoming more prevalent and destructive. These findings are part of a new report by the UN Environment Programme and GRID, Arundel. It argues that global warming is 
turning landscapes into tinder boxes. The global increase in wildfires is being driven by the climate crisis and land use change. A 14% rise has been predicted for the end of this de decade and a 50% increase by 2100. The report has been published just as Argentina faces devastating wildfires. The blaze has already destroyed nearly 8,000 square kilometers of forest, swamp and farmland. Countries including Brazil, the US, Siberia and Australia have also witnessed massive fires in recent times. The report also notes that the destruction caused by the events dis proportionately affects the world's poorest nations. It adds that most of the global government spending is devoted to fighting wildfires once they have already broken out. Less than 1% is being directed towards planning, prevention and preparedness. Researchers argue that the focus should be on risk reduction, working with local communities and strengthening the global commitment to fighting climate change. The report also emphasizes the importance of indigenous knowledge in addressing the crisis. And that's all that we have for you today. For more such stories, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.